Hello, hello, hello. Welcome all back to my playthrough of The Warlock of Firetop Mountain. Last time, we were in a crypt. We fought some dastardly undead. Uh, some zombies and a vampire. And now we have come to a crossroads. Uh, so, uh, tuck into some blankets, get yourself a warm beverage, perhaps even a snack, and let's keep going, shall we? Standing at the crossroads, you may go either north, west, or south. Let's try north. You are following a passageway which leads ahead to the south. After several meters, that was leads ahead to the north. After several meters, it bends sharply to the east. You continue eastwards until you eventually come across a narrow opening in the wall. Continue eastwards. Let's go through this opening. You climb through the opening to find yourself at the top of a narrow staircase leading downwards. Cautiously, you descend. Cautiously, you descend. Excuse me. The narrow staircase is cut into the rock, and there are about 20 steps leading down. At the bottom of the steps, at the bottom of the steps, a passageway leads into a large open chamber. The chamber stinks of putrefying flesh. The smell is so bad that you are tempted to, tempted to turn back. Three bodies lie in the chamber. You may either search the bodies, or tiptoe quietly through the room. Uh, let's search them. I think I shall try the second body. Oh, goodness gracious. He looks like he scratched a nasty scab, didn't he? As you move towards the second body, you accidentally kick the third corpse on the floor. Its eyes flick open, and it quickly sits up and lashes at you with its sharp, with its long, sharp fingernails. Let's test your luck. Oh boy. Oh no. I rolled a luck score of nine. I was unlucky. The putrefied creature catches you across the leg, and you suffer one stamina damage. If you're still alive, turn to 2.30. Hmm. The creature now standing before you is a semi-decayed man. His quick, eye, his quick eyes dart from side to side, watching you. His long tongue flashes out with a hissing noise. His teeth and nails are sharp, and he doesn't seem to be afraid of your weapon. He is a ghoul. Oh, goodness. You must fight. Oh, yes. I also... Changed the icon of the uh, the player. There's something I preferred. All right, ghoul, eight skill, goodness. Got a nineteen. Ooh, close one. Ooh, matched. There we go, and. Huzzah. Victory is mine. We have defeated it. The ghoul twitches and dies at your feet. You search its body and find little of interest. A couple of earrings worth one gold piece between them are in one of its pockets. You take these. You add two luck points for killing the ghoul. If you haven't already searched the first body... You do so and find five gold pieces. Hmm. Let's try it again for the second body. You search the pockets of the other body and find eight gold pieces, a bottle of liquid and an old piece of parchment. You may take these items. Hmm. Let's try the liquid. You swallow some of the liquid. The liquid is smooth and watery, and, as you drink it, you begin to glow. You feel euphoric and a little drunk at the same time. Your confidence grows and your weariness disappears. The bottle contains holy water, blessed by the overpriest of Cain Lash Ma. It has restored your stamina and skill to full strength. You also gain four luck points for making such a lucky find. If you if you have not yet looked at the parchment, you may do so. Turn to two twelve. Otherwise, you may leave the room. Uh, northwards, turn to 120. Let's look at the parchment. The 
parchment is well worn and almost illegible. It is a map of some sort, headed The Maze of Zagor. You can make little sense of it, although a room to the north is marked G-E-R, and another is to the east is marked S-M-P-L-E. You fold up the map and put it in your pocket. Uh, otherwise, yes. All right. We shall move on. South. 120. You leave the chamber and walk down a short passage. You reach a staircase going up. You climb the stairs and arrive at the top of, at the top of a passageway. 197. At the top of the stairs, the passage turns sharply to the east. As you pause to get your bearings, you hear creaking in the rock behind you. You spin around in time to see a heavy portcullis drop to the seal, drop to seal the, off the passageway behind you. The only way now is forward. You may either press on forward, turn 48, or check the walls. Hmm. Let's go forward. You are now, you are in an east-west corridor. If you wish to go east, you will turn to a corner northwards. To go this way, turn to 391. To go west. Uh, let's try this way. You're at the south end of a north-south corridor. Looking northwards, you can see a passage coming off from the east wall. Do you want to go up to this passage, turn to 52, check for secret passages as you walk northwards, go south following the bend that leads west. Uh, let's try going up to the passage. You are standing at a T-junction where a passage to the east comes off a north-south corridor. Uh, to go south, check secret passages, to go north, to go east. Hmm. Uh, I think... Ooh, hard choices. I think we shall go north. You are standing at a bend in the passage where you may go either west or south. Mm. Let's go s uh, west. Let's go west. You are standing at a crossroads. To the west, the passageway goes on a few metres and turns northwards. To the north, the passageway ends at a door. To the east, the passage continues and eventually turns southwards. Looking south, the passage goes on, goes on as far as you can see. Let's try north and see what that door gives us. You're standing outside a door at the north end of a north-south passage. To go south, turn to 308. To go through the door, turn to 179. Oh, goodness. He lifts, doesn't he? You have entered a large square room. Broken pottery lies scattered all about. One large clay vase is untouched and is full of clear liquid. A large bowl is of gold is a large bowl is full of gold pieces. As you enter the room, the door slams behind you, and you swing round to face a strange looking creature, half man, half bull, who is glaring at you. He is a minotaur, and he stalks towards you. He lowers his head, horns pointed at your chest, and charges. You must fight. Bring it on. Ooh, nine skill. This could be a challenge. Teen to seventeen. Ooh, he's rolling low, isn't he? Let's try for one last strike. Actually, this... Oh, sorry about that. That mechanic does get annoying sometimes when you accidentally click and jostle the dice. There we go. You are triumphant. Excellent. If you defeat this monstrous foe, turn to 258. You sort through the broken pots and find little of interest. The liquid looks, smells, and tastes like water. The coins in the pot are fraud. Eight genuine gold pieces 
lie on the surface of the pile which you take. Underneath are merely painted pieces of pottery. As you tip the vase out, it slips and breaks. A red-coloured key appears, hidden inside a false bottom in the bowl. You take this key. It is inscribed with the number 111. You, take two luck you add two luck points for defeating the Minotaur, and leave the room and continue your quest. You're standing outside the door, the north end of a north-south passageway. Let's head south. You are standing at a crossroads. To the west, the passageway goes on a few metres and turns northwards. To the north, the passageway ends at a door. To the east, the passageway continues and eventually turns southwards. Looking south, the passage goes on as far as you can see. Hmm. Let's go south. You follow a long, narrow passageway, which goes south, then east, then south again, until you eventually find yourself at a crossroads. Stand now at a crossroads. Hmm. Well, let's try south again. You set off south along a cold passageway. It swings west, then south, then west again, until you find yourself at a three-way junction. North, west, or back to the east. Let's try north. You set off and find yourself in the middle of a north-south passageway. There is a door in the western wall of the passage. Opposite the door is a passage going off eastwards. To the north, you can see a door some metres ahead. To the south, you can see a junction. Hmm. Let's go eastwards. The passageway runs off for several metres and runs north. You walk a long way. You walk a long. You walk a long way northwards. You may check for secret passages along the way, or simply proceed northwards. Mm, I'm not trusting these secret passage options. I think it might get me attacked. Uh, yes, we shall proceed northwards. You are at a crossroads. To go north, to go south, to go east, or to go west. Hmm. Why not? Let's try west this time. You travel westwards for several paces. Then the passage turns to the north. Some way up, you reach a junction. To the north, the passage ends shortly at a dead end. If you wish to explore the dead end, turn to... Hmm... Let's try the dead end. That sounds interesting. Why would it give me the option to explore it? You feel around the rock face at the end of the passage. One rock seems to come free and reveals a small knob with a handle on the end. Ooh. Uh, will you push it? Yes. You push the knob, a small stone doorway slides open. You can either ignore it and return to the junction or climb through. We shall. You're at the south end of a north-south passageway, at a dead end. If you go northwards, you will reach a crossroads. Hmm. You're at a crossroads. That bookmark must have been there from when I read this book a while ago. Hmm. You're at a crossroads. Well, we did just come from the north, so let's try the north again. The passageway ahead runs northwards for some time. You continue along the passageway. Ooh. Ooh, goodness! Ha-ha! We have made it. The passageway bends to the west and begins to get quite narrow. You reach a small, rocky arch, which you will have to stoop to get through. On the other side of you... On the other side of the arch, you pause and look around. You are in a large cavern, which disappears into distant blackness. The cavern is potential. The cavern is partially lit by natural light, which comes in through a through a hole in the roof. You cannot see a way through. 
As you shine your lantern through the cavern, you hear a rumble. A dull glow flickers in the blackness. Suddenly a jet of fire shoots from the depths of the cavern, narrowly missing you and singeing the mossy, gro- the mossy groves on the wall. You throw yourself to the, onto the ground and look up to see a large dragon stalking out of the darkness towards you. Smoke curls from its nostrils. Its scaly red skin glistens with an oily covering. The beast is some fifteen metres long. How will you attack the creature? Draw your sword and prepare to attack. Search your memory for another means of attack. I believe that we actually have something for this. Dragonfire spell. Yes, we do. Does the name Farig, uh, Farigo D. Magio mean anything to you? It does. Turn to 26. You remember D. Magio's small leather-bound book and silently mouth the spell contained within its pages. You shout loudly at the dragon and it stops in its tracks. It cocks its head to one side and eyes you suspiciously. You fling a stone at its head and the rock bounces off of its nose. The beast lets out an angry cry and breathes deeply, a roaring sound emerging from within its throat. The dragon exhales, and from within its teeth, and from between its teeth, you can see another fireball building up. You prepare yourself, and as the ball of flames comes from your ma- comes from its mouth, you cry, Akil Erif, Akam Erif, Erif Erif, Di Magio. The fireball continues no further. With an agonised scream, the dragon tries to shake the flames from its snout. But there, but there the burning continues. Squealing in agony, the dragon turns its back and leaps into the blackness, flailing its head from side to side. Turn to 371. You have defeated the dragon. Add three luck points. Safe for the moment... You investigate the cavern and find a ca- and find a passageway which continues to the west. When you are ready, turn to two four seven, two seven four. Hmm. You leave the cavern and follow a long, narrow corridor. After several hundred meters, it ends at a large wooden door, which is slightly ajar. Carefully, you ease it open a little further and poke your head round the side to see what is in the room. You see a small old man sitting at a table on his own, playing with a pack of cards. He looks quite harmless. He looks quite a harmless old soul, grey-haired and bearded. He is seated. What will you do? Burst through the door, sword drawn to surprise the old man? Knock on the door and enter, greeting the old man courteously? Get down on all fours and try to creep into the room unnoticed? Hmm... Well, we've been kind to most people we've met. Why not greet this man courteously? The old man looks at you, accepts your greetings, and bids you sit down. You sit at the table and notice that he is glaring at you. His piercing stare is becoming hypnotic. But you realise this and break eye contact. He opens his mouth to speak to you, and to your amazement, instead instead of an old man's voice... The whole room resonates with a powerful voice which seems to be coming from the walls themselves. You throw a glance back to the old man and can see him changing before your very eyes. He is of imposing height. His tattered black eyes are fixed directly on yours. He has been expecting you. Turn to 358. The battle will call upon all your reserves of strength and cunning. Your adversary has disappeared and now stands at a far end of the room in front of the door, with two locks. How will you approach him? Grip your sword firmly and advance towards him. Look through your pack for a weapon to use, or look around the room for another means of attack or defence. Hmm. I am slightly frightened. If you will forgive me, I am going to bookmark this page. That being said, let's try with the sword. His booming voice calls out, 
Poor fool. Do you think you could match my power with your puny weapon? You continue with determination. If it is a simple brawl you want, stranger, then I shall give you your last. And with these words, he vanishes and reappears behind you. You swing round to face him, and the fight starts. This is a battle to the death. There is no escaping here. The time has come to confront the warlock. You must fight. Oh, we're matched for skill. And health. If it weren't for my magical sword, perhaps we would be at a disadvantage. Let's fight. Oh, we both miss. Clash number two. Huzzah, I have struck a blow. Oh, he rolled high. Oh, goodness. And my crescent shield is useless as ever. <clears throat> Alright, that looks good. Yes. Another strike. Huzzah. Oh, we have hit again. Yes. Come on. 22, 19, yes. This magic sword is saving us. D4, 18. Yes, come on. I think we have won this fight. Oh, goodness. Spoke too soon. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. There we go, and for the final strike... Ooh, he stands strong! And of course, Crescent Shield doing nothing to help me. Come on. Yes! You are triumphant. If you defeat this powerful foe, turn to 396. With the Warlock now defeated, you know your quest is almost over. You approach the door to his chambers. Upon it, open it, and peer around. The door opens to reveal a small, dimly lit room. The, whole, the walls are hung with ornate curtains, laced in silver and gold. A single flame burns in one corner, throwing a light on a low table in the middle of the floor. On this table is a large chest... You step up to investigate the chest, and from all around, yet from nowhere, a mysterious sound fills the room. It sounds like the rumbling of thunderclouds preparing to make storm. You approach the chest, and can see that it is held shut by three locks. As you approach, the noise gets louder. Will you hack the box with your sword and try to split it open, or search through your bags to see if you find any keys to fit? Well, I do have a few keys... Let's try it. During your adventure, you will have come across various keys, and should have collected some of these. Three of them must be the correct combination to open the chest. Peering at the chest more closely, you notice the number 321 is inscribed faintly across the top. Have you come across any keys in your adventure? If so, you may try three of them. Ooh... 321. I'm not good at maths. Choose the first key which you would like to try on the chest. Hmm. Hold on a minute. I need a texter. I'm going to do some math here. So if I... Hmm. Oh, goodness, I'm scared. I'm going to make a bookmark. Let's try the 111 key. Plus 99. That's too much. Hmm. Oh, I lost two stamina points. Uh-oh. Hmm. Seems I'm missing a key. Hmm. 
Hmm. Oh no! You do, you do not possess the three keys you require. This is the end of your journey. You sit on the chest and weep as you realise that you will have to explore the mountain once more in order to find the keys. The end. No! Failure! Ah well. Well. For now, I will call that the end of this episode. Join me next time, and hopefully we can wrap this up. I will find the last key, uh, and then we shall return. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you all next time. Happy adventuring.